Hello everyone, our lesson for today is all about mathematical language. So I will be discussing about the definition of language, elements of mathematical language, and the propositional calculus. So what is language? Language is a systematic means of communicating by the use of sim sounds or conventional symbols. It is the code humans used as a form of expressing themselves and communicating with others. It may also be defined as a system of words used in a particular discipline. Now, these definitions describe language in terms of the following components. The first one, it is, it is a vocabulary of symbols or words. Second, it is a grammar consisting of rules on the use of these symbols. Third one, it is a community of people who use and understand these symbols. The fourth one, it is a range of meanings that can be communicated, communicated with these symbols. Since all of the aforementioned components are found in mathematics, it also qualifies as a language. Mathematics is a system of communication about objects like numbers, variables, sets, operations, functions, and equations. It is a collection of both symbols and their meaning shared by a global community of people who have an interest in the subject, regardless of where in the world learners of math come from or what language they speak, they will likely understand what those symbols mean. It must be noted that no language is self-explanatory. The language of mathematics is certainly not in, non-instinctive and must be learned. Now, why would anyone want to learn mathematics? What is it useful for? Think of mathematics as a collection of useful tools to help you get things done. This task may be as simple as budgeting money or complex like calculating a satellite speed as it orbits the Earth. All of these are built on the same knowledge expressed using mathematical language. So therefore, mathematics is a universal language the only one shared by all human beings, regardless of culture, religion, or gender. A person uses the same calculation process when computing. For example, interest earned for investment in peso, dollar, euro, or yen. Not everyone can be proficient in English, French, Chinese, or Japanese but most possess math literacy. This shared language called numeracy connects people across continents and through time. Mathematics is not just for ma mathematics majors, but for everyone. It is not just about calculating complicated equations, but about making lives more efficient more secure, richer, and fuller. Now let's go to the elements of mathematical language. So like other languages, mathematics has nouns, pronouns, verbs, and sentences. It has its own vocabulary, grammar, syntax, synonyms, Neg negations, sentence structure, paragraph structure, conventions, and abbreviations. It is designed in such a way that one can write about numbers, sets, functions, etc., as well as the processes undergone by these elements, like adding, multiplying, grouping, and evaluating. Mathematics uses many of symbols. There are the 10 digits like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Symbols for operations like plus, minus, the multiplication symbol, and the division symbols that represents 
values like X, Y, Z, and etc. And maybe other special symbols. So letters often, but not always, have special uses as follows. As, as what you can see in the illustration. For example, the start of the alphabet, A, B, C, it is used for constants or fixed values from I to N, uh, like I, J, K, N, it is used for positive integers for counting. And the end of the alphabet, like X, Y, Z, are used for variables or the unknown. So like in normal languages, the correspondence between symbols and their meaning are conventions rather than rules. Now let's take a look at this illustration. So in the equation y is equal to ax plus b, it is assumed that a and b are constants and x is a variable whose value changes, which in turn makes the variable y change its, val its value as well. So even though the words noun, verb, or pronoun are not used in mathematics, the similarities with the English language can be observed. For example, the nouns could be constants such as numbers or expressions with numbers. So in this case, like for example, 11, 4, or 6, minus 1 half, or 98. So a verb could be the equal sign or the inequality symbols. And then pronouns could be the variables like X and Y. And lastly, sentences could be formed by putting together these parts. Like for example, in, the, in English, the sentences are the equivalent in mathematics is 6X plus 5 is equals to 30, for example and 2x plus 3y is equals to 7. Now let's proceed to the propositional calculus. So, what is proposition? A proposition is a complete declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. For example, So in this example, like letter A, Beijing is the capital of China, B, Milan is the capital of France, letter C, 2 plus 2 is equals 4, then D, 4 times 2 is equals to 6. So in this illustration, the propositions A and C are true while propositions B and D are false. And let's take a look at this uh, other illustration. So consider the following sentences. Letter A, is it time? B, pay attention to this. Letter C, X plus 2 is equal to 4. And letter D, A plus B is equal to C. So sentences A and B are not propositions because they are not declarative sentences or statements. Likewise, sentences C and D are not propositions because they are neither true or nor false since the variables in these sentences have no assigned values yet. So if a proposition P is true, its truth value is true denoted by letter T. So if it is false, its truth value is false, denoted by letter F. So that ends our lesson for today. So 
the topics that we discuss are the definition of mathematics, the elements of mathematical language, and the propositional calculus. So I hope you learned something from these topics. Have a good day, everyone.